Over the millennia, evolution created the perfect life form, the gamer. Some games just tap into that ancient code, directly into our gamer DNA. And we thought, what better games to talk about than ones that really get it when you're vibrating at the same frequency as the refresh rate of your monitor? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 games that understand our gamer instinct too well. Starting off with number 10, it's Skyrim. <laughs> Duh. Gamers love to loot. It's just the ultimate dopamine hit for so many people. You got this overstuffed inventory filled with weapons, armor sets, and a whole lot of junk. It's just a hoarder's dream. The game encourages taking stuff as much as possible at every available opportunity, and it, it, it often doesn't really get talked about, okay? But Bethesda knows exactly what they're doing, and they make sure you know it. During the quest Lost to the Ages, you explore this impossible to pronounce dungeon. Like, look at that. That's not a word. There's not enough vowels for that to be a word. Arkhamphums. That word is like if you overturned a bucket of Legos. Just random components all over the place. Inside, you run into a friendly ghost with a much more pronounceable name, Katria, who agrees to assist you on your quest. I'm not going to talk you out of it, am I? I know. I know. I was just like you once. Along the way, you can actually find Catria's corpse, which will trigger any gamer's loot instincts immediately, so you're probably gonna hover over that body and take everything you can get your grubby hands on. You do it right in front of the ghost, too. A uh, ghost's not too happy about it. She knows what you did. She's like, really? You had to take the armor? Come on, leave me with a little dignity. Ooh, busted. At this point, it's too late. Putting the armor back on doesn't make her any happier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, your armor's worth 50 gold, so I'm taking it. So there. And number nine is the Resident Evil 4 remake. For some games, certain actions just become instinct. In Resident Evil 4, the opening village is routine to anyone who's played through the game multiple times. And because the game's been re-released so much, there's a pretty high chance somebody's gonna play it again. It's easily possible to have like four copies of the game. Came out on GameCube, Wii, PlayStation 2, Xbox 360, PlayStation 4. So people know how the game starts. You get to the village, run into the house, grab the shotgun, jump out the window, climb the tower, get the shotgun shells, hide out for a while. For a lot of people, that tower is a place of safety. The one spot on the map you could easily hide from the chainsaw guy and wait out the clock until the church bells ring and the enemy stop attacking. So when the remake came along, it's inevitable that you'll try to do that. Only this time, Capcom's onto our tricks, so you climb the ladder and the remake, the whole upper floor just collapses on you instead. It's a dirty trick that reinforces the fact this isn't just some high fidelity remaster. There's a high possibility stuff's gonna play out differently. And then you just shoot the bell. It's time for you to go back in your houses. Squares. You just do what you're told. They ring the bell and that's that. Ah! At number eight, in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, putting that guy back in the cage. There's so many crazy things you can do that triggers the gamer instincts in Tears of the Kingdom. Like, a lot of them. But I am going to stick to a, a basic one here. Dotting around the world, you can find these moblin bases that contain Hylian prisoners. You don't actually have to rescue these guys, but they might have something useful for you to buy if you do. Which, I, I don't know, kind of a weird reward, you know. Oh, my knight in shining armor. Thank you so much for saving my life. As a token of my gratitude, I shall allow you to purchase something from me at full price. No, I think it gives you stuff. That's nice and all, I guess, but gamers aren't exactly known for being nice. Everybody wants to see what you can kind of get away with in this type of a situation anyways, or what kind of nasty things you can do that the game will actually acknowledge. Like, for instance, if you free a prisoner, you can just turn around and put him back in the cage again, and if you do, the guy will actually say something, wondering out loud that they thought they were freed, but, well, maybe it was my imagination. No, <laughs> it wasn't. I'm just a jerk. I put you back in the cage. I didn't have a reason. And the game doesn't just let you do it. It actually recognizes you're doing it with special dialogue, which shows that Nintendo understands the kinds of things people ended up doing in Tears of the Kingdom. And number seven is Batman Arkham Knight. Don't you ever just want to punch a guy out sometimes? In video games, the option to haul off and knock someone flat on their ass was mostly pretty limited. You get a few renegade actions in Mass Effect games, but most of the time you're forced to respond to insults with quiet dignity, and uh, that's even when you don't really want to. 
Arkham Knight knows better, at least in at least th this instance. One of the first guys you lock up in the GCPD, he'll start talking mad shit to your face as you pass by him. You've only lasted this long because it's what he wants. He's been dying all night. You just didn't know it. And he's behind bars already, so in most other games, that's that. This guy's just got an attitude. But old Batman doesn't put up with that kind of crap. So when your instincts kick in, you try to punch him, even though in any other scenario that wouldn't work. It does. You even get a special animation, really cathartic, because it shuts him the hell up. And even as the prison fills up with more and more goons, they never get as lippy as that guy. And number six is God of War Ragnarok. So Skyrim throws in a comment where you loot the body in front of the ghost, but the general act of looting usually goes unannounced in most games. I have to imagine it'd be weird to hang out with a video game protagonist for a long time. Every time they go anywhere, they just hug the walls and pick up everything that's not nailed down. You never get anything done because they'd stop at six different places before going to a grocery store. Like video game protagonists make people with obsessive compulsive disorder, like crippling OCD. It makes them look almost rational. Like there's a ton of looting in God of War Ragnarok and the devs know you're doing it because in one specific instance, there's a point where you've got Tyr tagging along with Kratos and Atreus, where if you stop to explore down a side path and get loot, Tyr will actually wonder what Kratos is doing. Atreus responds with, my dad likes loot. Like usually gameplay elements like this aren't really considered canon, but they all but confirm it. Kratos is just all about that sweet, sweet loot. At number five is Witcher 3. Everyone uses exploits once in a while in RPGs, and that's part of the entire appeal. When a game gives you an easy way to make money, the gamer instinct kicks in, and it's hard not to take advantage of it. Even when money isn't a problem, it's hard to resist the allure of an easy payday, and the developers in CD Projekt Red were well, pretty aware of that. A lot of devs would take the boring route and just patch out all the money exploits, but these guys did something fun instead. They acknowledge what you're up to. While it might appear punishing at first, they're mostly just joking. If you have the Heart of Stone expansion and more than 35,000 cash on hand, you'll trigger a quest called The Taxman Cometh while exploring Oxenford. In it, Geralt is confronted by a tax collector who questions him about some income discrepancies, all of which happen to align with some of the more popular gold farming strategies in the game, at least back when it first came out. Honored, I guess. What seems to be the problem? Embrace undeclared income. Excuse me? We've had reports, numerous, that over the last months you've come into a great deal of coin. Quickly. So quickly it's raised suspicions. First he asks about wholesale trade of rawhide and white orchard, a reference to the cow killing trick in the first area where you could kill infinite cows for hides and milk. The second question is related to purchasing seashells, which could be made into pearls, another popular money making trick. You can respond honestly or lie, it doesn't really matter. Even if you are accused of cheating your taxes, it's not really a high fine or anything, so who cares? Still, you never see a game that acknowledges exploits quite in this way. It's, in my opinion, a lot of fun. At number four is Fallout 4, a basic thing, but very few games give a reason for how and why you can skip dialogue. It's purely mechanical, so when a game comes along and actually justifies this common gamer instinct, you know, the urge to just skip all the boring talking and get into the action, it stands out. In Fallout 4, you could speed through any talking segment, like basically any other game, but what makes it different is that when you do it, you'll actually hear some special voice lines from the character saying stuff like, uh-huh, and yeah, when you skip dialogue. I'll find him. You have my word. Thank you. Nick should be easy to spot. Blah, blah, blah. The real funny stuff comes when you realize if you press the key for more hostile dialogue options, your MC will actually get a lot more rude when in the conversation, like they'll tell people to shut up, fling insults at them. There's even special dialogue just for specific characters. It's a lot of extra work for something most players are definitely not going to notice, but it's those little extra bits that they, they make Bethesda games unique. And number three is Lies of P. It's kind of just a Souls game thing, but I wanted to talk about Lies of P because Lies of P rules. All these Souls style games have glowing spots on the ground that indicate pickups. When you see those things, you want them because sometimes there's something really good, like a permanent upgrade or some important quest item. But there's, I mean, a element of cruelty in these games as well. They know the gamer instinct to pick up every little item on the ground, so they exploit that to our disadvantage. Instead of just leaving stuff along your path free of danger, they often put items at the end 
into poison swamps, or on a narrow piece of wood you can easily fall off of, or in the middle of a room where you can get ambushed. Liza P loves to pull these tricks on you, so they really add insult to injury. Most of the time, they're intentionally worthless. So all those times where you died going after this one item wasn't even remotely worth the trouble. Most of the time, you're worse off than you were before. The developers know that when you see a glowing blue spot on the ground, you're going to go for it. Even when you know there's going to be a trap, your instincts tell you to go for it anyway. Inevitably, it's just like a rock or something. You kick yourself for falling in the trap, then proceed to do the exact same thing over and over again with the next one and the next one. And number two is it'll do too. You know what the drill is. Anytime you go into a house in Zelda, it's looting time. You smash up all the vases, cut out the leaves, steal the chests. Link is I had just a tornado of destruction going through these NPCs' lives. Very few Zelda games ever acknowledge what the player is actually doing. But this oddball indie game cuts right through the bowl. So much of this game is a parody of Zelda titles. And one of the more absurd gags is that you can literally destroy almost everything in an NPC's house. And they'll give you a special reply when you do it. Clearly, this game understands your gamer instincts when it comes to going into people's houses. You just ransack the place. That's just what you do in games. And this game lets you do it to an absurd degree. You're not just breaking a few things. You're just destroying everything in the house. Most of the time, it's pretty pointless, but just hearing the NPCs complain is half the fun. Out of all the Zelda-inspired indie devs out there, these guys know what everyone's doing when they play these things, and that is smash absolutely everything in the world. And finally, at number one is Baldur's Gate 3. In these gigantic RPGs, your instinct is to see what you can get away with. Usually, it's a lot, but few games are as reactive as Baldur's Gate 3, especially few games with these production values, Jesus. The game lets you do a ton, but one thing that seems ironclad is you can't discard your nether stone, a plot critical item needed to take on the main enemy of the game. Like all key items, you can't normally remove it from your inventory, but there is a way around that and give a gamer a loophole they're gonna try it no matter how well advised it is and yeah it's actually possible to discard neither stone by putting it in a container then throwing it out in most games they'd either just not let it happen or give you some generic game over thing Valerian knows our instincts too well and actually goes out of its way to reward the creativity no matter how pointless it may be so if you throw out the stone the Emperor is gonna appear call you an idiot and the thing that you've been trying to avoid the entire game comes to pass you get transformed into a mind flare. <laughs> Obviously, this is not something you want, but people being who they are, the devs clearly understood that people would try it out anyway and adjusted the ending accordingly. I got a couple of bonuses here for you as well. Firstly, it's Max Payne 2. At a certain point, most people can tell that a trap is coming in a game, even when the game doesn't actually let you do anything about it. At least most of the time, in Max Payne 2, the game actually lets you act on your instincts and you're rewarded for it. You can kill the guys who are leading you into a trap and go to the next shootout completely prepared if you want. This is right at the start of the game so there's not a whole lot of danger of getting overwhelmed but at least you're not forced to act like an idiot if you know something's coming other ones in high on life sometimes games uh just want you to shoot everybody but most games make it impossible so many games make plot critical characters immortal that it's easy to assume that shooting anyone in a game doesn't matter because nothing's gonna happen anyway rarely games let you follow through on the bloodlust like high on life does it it confronts you very early on with a very annoying child in something like fallout this would be a point where the guy's immortal but not here here you can actually kill them the game knows you're gonna try and shoot them but it also knows uh that you expect it's not gonna do anything so to subvert your expectations they make it so it actually works and you kill them when all you have to interact with in a world is your gun you're gonna use it gamer instinct says it's usually not gonna matter unless it's a combat situation uh but here you can just blast them and be done with it look at me you can shoot me anywhere ah, you shot me i'm dead eh. all right there are you happy now well, I, I didn't think we'd be allowed to kill him. Yeah, normally, killing children in games isn't isn't allowed, but he's dead. We killed this kid. Are, are you happy now? We killed a kid. A kid is dead now. 
There goes our E for everybody rating. Also, that's it. No more annoying kid. So I guess, yeah, cool. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter or X or whatever at Falcon the Hero. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.